Welcome everyone to another CUDA software worksheet tutorial. This is Mr. West and you're watching West Explains Best. Today we're talking about slope and, inter, or slope, and slope intercept form. This is my favorite uh, CUDA worksheet tutorial because it goes through the whole gamut of different types of scenarios that you will see, all the different problems, graphing, writing equations, finding the slope. So it's really good at uh, just anything that you're gonna encounter in slope intercept form. This video may take probably a little bit more than 10 minutes, but I just wanted to give you that heads up because um, yeah, this, one, this one's a pretty good one. So find the slope of each line. Well, one thing you're gonna learn, if you, if you want, you can watch the, the notes video I have on slope intercept form, but uh, I'll give you this, the, the, the quick version. That's rise over run is equal to your slope. It's a measure of how steep something is. So rise is your vertical change. Okay, so this is your up and down, and your run is your horizontal change. Okay, so we just need to count how much it goes up or down and then how much it goes left to right. Now, personally, when I'm doing slope, I always like to move left to right, and then I just keep the, the top up to down. Okay, so either the top is gonna be positive or negative for me, I always make the bottom number positive, I think it's much easier to do it this way. Uh, talk to your uh, doctor to see what he recommends, but I'm guessing your math teacher will also uh, agree with this. Maybe not, but probably. Okay, so again, we're gonna start left to right, so always start at the leftmost point. We're gonna stop, start at this one and count to this one. How do you do that? Well, you count the rise. How much does it go up to meet that point? It moves up three. So my rise will be three. And then what will my run be? My run, I move to the right one, two. So my run is two, so three halves is my slope. It's as simple as that. For this one, uh, skip down to number three. I would go down three, so that's minus three. I went down, and that's the negative y direction, so it's negative three. And then to the right, one, two, three, four, five, right five. Now let's say you're like, hey, I just wanna, I don't like to go left to right, I like to go right to left. How will that differ? Well, if we go right to left, we can still do that. So I'd go up one, two, three units, I'd get a positive three. Okay, a positive three. And then what happens? I go in the negative x direction. So I'm going to the left this time, that's a negative five. Now, I don't like writing my uh, fractions with the negative in the denominator, so I would just change this to negative three over five, which is the same thing. So you get the same thing either way you go. Um, it's just kind of like stylistic preference, and in my opinion, this is superior. Okay, find the slope of the line through each pair of points. Okay, in order to find the vertical change, over the horizontal change. Algebraically, what we do is we subtract the y values from each other, and then we subtract the x values from each other. Does it matter the order in which you subtract the x values or the y values? No, as long as you subtract them in the same order in the top and bottom. For example, we can do y1 minus y2 as long as we do x1 minus x2 in the bottom. You can't have y2 minus y1 in the top, and then x1 minus x2 in the bottom. The twos need to line up, and the ones need to line up, okay? So just keep that in mind as you do this. Most people just consider the top one, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase that in case you're someone that doesn't like enough, doesn't like too much information and confuses you. Okay, I have encountered that a lot. Okay, so now we have uh, our x values, here's our y values, and we simply just plug it into our little, our little equation, our little formula here. Okay, so we have m equals y2 minus y1, negative 16, net 17 minus 20, oops, that's 12, 20, over 4 minus 5. So on the uh, top I get negative, what is that, 37, over 4 minus 5 is negative 1, so I get Negative 37 divided by negative 1 is going to be a positive 37 over 1 or just positive 37. Now, this is something important. All slopes can be written as uh, a fraction. So even if it's just 37, technically you could write this over 1. All integers can be written over, over 1, and that just makes it easier as a fraction to see your rise versus your run. 
Okay, we'll do another quick one. Uh, this time I'm not, well, x1, y1, be good. x2, y2, make sure you label. So we have negative five minus negative one over, was that negative 14 minus a negative five. Okay, now we have multiple negative signs. We need to add, so we get negative four on the top and we get negative nine in the bottom. Negative five, but negative, positive four over nine. We have a rise of four and a run of nine. Okay, find the slope of each sign. Now, this is in a different form. This is in slope intercept form. Okay, so we have y, and then we have equals, and then plus, and then we're gonna have an m in there, and then we're gonna have an x in there, and then we're gonna have a b. Okay, this is the form, y equals mx plus b. This is the same thing as y equals the slope times your x value, those are your inputs, you generally, your x values are your inputs, plus your y-intercept, where it touches the y-axis. Okay, so if we're looking at these form, the first thing you gotta know is you have to have y by itself on one side of the equal sign. So y by itself. That's a critical step. Once you have y by itself, it's very easy to recognize what is the slope. The slope is always the number being multiplied by x. If there's no x, Technically, the slope is zero, okay? It made the x disappear. So keep that in mind. If we have something like y equals three, you're like, well, there's no x. Where's the x? Well, technically, it's y equals zero x plus three. So our slope is zero. Slope equals zero, okay? But I just want to give you a heads up on that in case you encounter that. And then x equals a number, for example. This is kind of a sidetrack. This has an undefined slope. This is a special case. Special. Okay, special, just like, just like your mom says you are. And you are, you are special. Everyone's special. <laughs> All right, find the slope of each line. So this one's actually a very easy process. We're just gonna look at the number in front of x. In this case, it's five over two. This one's seven over five. This one's one over four. It's that easy. You look for the number that's being multiplied by x, as long as y is alone. Sketch the graph of each line. Okay, now we're gonna have a process here. Step one is you're gonna plot the y-intercept. This is the number by itself, once you have it in slope-intercept form, it's the number by itself. So here we already know that y equals mx plus b. This is gonna be our b. Keep the sign in front of it also, that's very important. So this is our y-intercept. So we're gonna go down to negative three on the y-intercept and that's our point. So technically the y-intercept always has an x value of zero, because if you plug in zero, this is how y it is the case, y equals, if you plug in zero, okay, and x equals zero everywhere on the y-axis, if you plug in zero for x, what do you get for y? You get y equals negative three. So this is the point technically, zero comma negative three. So that is our point, okay? That's our y-intercept, that's where we start. We plot the y-intercept, okay? Now step two, we use slope to find additional points. And technically you only need two points to make a line, but sometimes in my opinion, I think it helps to make multiple points. So you can repeat this process as many times you want. Now, biggest mistake I see people do is they're like, oh, the slope is three, so I just go over here to x is three and make a dot and then I connect. No, don't do that, okay? I, I don't know where you got that idea, but it wasn't from me. What you wanna do is you wanna change this three into a three over one, okay? And now we have a slope with a rise, rise of three and a run, run of one, okay? So we're gonna start from the y-intercept. That's our starting point, okay? This guy is very important. Start there, start there, and we're gonna rise three, one, two, three. Okay, so we get there, and then we're gonna run one, and we get there. Now, for those of you who are like, oh, can you run before you rise? Technically, you can, but I mean, why? Why? I mean, there's really no point to do that. It's the same thing, but you get to the same spot, okay? And we can make another point there. Boom. Actually, I'm gonna use a different color because the yellow represents our golden y-intercept. It's very important, okay? Now, we can, like I said, we can repeat this process as many times as we want. One, two, three, rise, run of one, Boom, okay, we can repeat this process as many times as we want. We can even go in reverse. So instead of going 
uh, rise of 3, we can make it negative 3 in a run of negative 1. Why can we do this? Because a negative divided by a negative is the same thing as a positive. Those are equal. So technically, we can go in reverse. So we can go down 3, 1, 2, 3. We can go left 1, 1. And then we can put a pot, a, not pot, a spot there and <laughs> connect our dots. This is the part that uh, you guys have been practicing ever since kindergarten. Connect those dots. It's as simple as that. Okay, now let me show you the quick way to do it. I mean, I'm not going to be as detailed. So let's take uh, number 11, for example. Okay, start with your y-intercept. Y-intercept is 2. So we're going to plot 2 on the y-axis. Boom, first point. Second step, find our slope. Okay, slope is a number in front of x. There it is. We're going to go down 3. 1. Let me show you the laser pointer. 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then we're going to run 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, it's a negative 3, so that's why I like to put the negative in the top. Negative 3 over 4 makes it easier for me. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I make a spot right in that spot, dot, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Now, I only need two dots, really, two points, and there I go. Okay. Maybe just one more for fun because we're, we're having so much fun. Y equals 6X plus 1, okay? Uh, y intercept of 1, and then this is negative 6 over 1 technically, so I'm going to go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then I'm going to go over to the right to the 1, 1, and then I make a dot there, and then I connect the dots. This is our, my favorite spot, favorite part. Man, I'm like obsessed with that word today. Okay, um, all these are pretty basic, pretty basic, pretty basic. Okay, um, all of them are like negative slopes too. That's interesting. Let's do this one just in case. So we have uh, negative four. Okay, and then we're gonna go up nine and then over one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine over one. Okay, sometimes uh, you have to go backwards if you don't have enough spot uh, space on your graph. But in this case, we had space. Now, one thing also, don't do this. I don't know what who's been teaching this, but a lot of my students have been doing this recently. I'm just really questioning who their middle school math teacher was, don't do that. It should go through the line. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening with my notability. Through the line, okay, and then arrows on either side. Okay, I think this is a final, final one here. This is great, okay, I think we're just on time. Write the slope-intercept form of the equation of each line, okay? So what we need is we're basically going backwards. Remember, we want it in y equals... Uh, let me actually I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go copy this guy just because he was so good looking right here this guy No, the whole thing Okay, the sound effects do help just in case you're running wondering Okay, so the first thing I always do is ident identify my y-intercept. Where does it touch the y-axis? And in this case it is right here. Boom That's five. So I know for this equation it's going to be five now, the second thing I want to do is I want to find another point. So this is step step one of writing an equation is find y-intercept. Step two, find uh, a second point. Step three, determine slope between those two points. And then step four, write equation or input into equation. In, step four, input into y equals mx plus b. So if you want to pause this screen and, and refer back to it, you can. Or take notes on it, you can. But I'm, I'm moving on. Okay. So where's my second point? This time I'm also going to use yellow just so you can see. I want to look for a place where it intersects exactly on like a point, like a crosshair like that. So here is definitely not an intersection point. We don't want to use that. That one's, again, probably decimal fraction, decimal fraction. Okay, we want where it intersects exactly. In that case, this isn't super clear, but it looks like right there is going to be our second point. So we already know that it's going to be plus 5. Now we need to find our rise over a run. So I like to start at the right point. I go rise first, rise of 2, 2 over, what's my run? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I put my X, uh, what color should I use? Purple. And then equals Y. And that's it. OK, 
Okay, I have my rise over run, that's my slope. I have my y-intercept and that's it. Okay, let's go to this one. We have our y-intercept of negative five. Okay, so we're gonna have minus five at the end. I need to find a second point and it looks like we have tons. We could choose this one, we could choose this one, we could choose this one because they all intersect at these little crosshairs. So if we want, we can just start at, uh, I mean, this guy, I mean, he's close, doesn't really matter. And now I find my rise over run between those two places. I'll go down one and I go to the right one. So I can change this to uh, negative one over positive one, X equals Y. And you generally what you wanna do is you wanna simplify. So if you have a fraction like that and it's over one, you wanna write Y equals negative one X minus five or better yet Y minus X, well, Y equals negative X sloppy y equals negative x minus five okay let's see if we can do uh let's go to two more all right here so we have our y intercept negative three let's find another point looks like that's another point right there okay that one looks like a good intersection so we have negative three our we go down three to the right one down three to the right one x equals y so we simplify y equals negative three x minus three. This is a special case for number 22. I don't know about you. Now, if you try to find uh, the y-intercept, you're like, oh my gosh, there's no y-intercept. What do I do? Don't fear, okay? If you want, move on to slope. So slope, just find two points, okay? And find, the, those, those two are fine. You can choose closer ones. Find the rise. The rise is one, two. Find the run. Huh, the, the, there's no run. So what do we do? Well, the run is zero technically. And oh my gosh, we have another problem. We're dividing by zero for a slope. What does this mean? It means it's undefined. Anytime you divide by zero, it's undefined slope. This is a special case. So the answer is going to be x equals five because this is everywhere x equals five. Anytime it's a vertical line, it's going to be uh, undefined slope with x equals a number. Anytime it's a horizontal line, so it's going to be y equals like 4, for example, it's going to be a horizontal slope, and it's going to be slope equals 0. So those are the two special cases. Uh, the one on the right isn't that special, but the one on the left definitely is. Uh, but in case you counter that, I want you guys to be prepared. That's all I got for today. I wanted to keep it a little bit short. Hope you found this informative and that you liked it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on West Explains.